Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss the problem sum of n input numbers. First, we will write algorithm and we will convert the same algorithm into flowchart and we will write code implementation using C language. Code for different languages has been provided in the description. Let's discuss the problem in detail. So here we need to find out sum of n input numbers. So what we have to know? First we need to know what is n and accordingly we need to get the input numbers. So here input will be a number n and n given numbers. So let's see examples. For example, n equal to 3. So this means that we need to provide three different numbers. So it can be 1, 7, 17. One possibility. So what is the sum of these three numbers? 1 plus 7 plus 17 which is equal to 25. For example, n equal to 10. So n equal to 10 means we need to provide n input number. The sum of these numbers is sum equal to 228. So let's write algorithm for this. So before writing algorithm, first we need to know what is the input. So here input is clear. First we need to give n and according to n we have to give numbers. So what is the output? So output here is sum of these n given numbers. Right? So now let's write algorithm for the same. So first step of algorithm is always starting the algorithm. So step 1 is start. So step 2. So first we need to know what is the value of n and we need to use some variable to define sum. Right? So these two let us define as the steps. So step 2 is we need to know the value of n. So read number n. We need to declare two variables. One is sum variable which is going to be our output and we need to read n given numbers. So to count we need to use one variable. So let the counter variable as i. So two variables we have to declare. One is sum, another one is counter variable. So declare sum to 0 and i to 1 because total n different numbers we have to read. So initially let's define i as 1. So fourth step. So now we got the counter variable i and we know how many numbers we have to read. So in a loop, we need to read n given numbers. So using this counter variable, let's run it in a loop. So as it is a loop, we need to mention repetition steps. So how many steps we have to repeat? Let's fill later. For now, let's start with step 5. So step 5 is n times we have to read numbers right so define that variable as number so read numbers num so let's see what we are doing here initially sum equal to 0 i equal to 1 as per step 3 Let's assume that n equal to 4. So as per step 5, we are reading number. Number is given as number equal to 5. So once we get the number, we can add to our sum value. So sum equal to sum plus num. So and this number is the first number which we are so i equal to 1 that means that this is our first number. So sum is going to be 0 plus 5. 
which is equal to 5 and we already processed one number so i has to be incremented to i plus 1 which is equal to 2 so we got the number then what we have to do we have to process this number to add to the sum variable so update sum as update sum equal to sum plus number and we need to increment i so step number 7 increment i by 1 that means i equal to i plus 1 these two set steps we can combine as one step also so this these three steps are going to be repeated n times right so what we have to do repeat steps 5 to 7 until what is the counter variable we used i less than or equal to n so once i reaches n means we processed all n numbers so here we can mention it as i equal to n also until i equal to n so once we have done that means that we have processed all the input numbers that means we got our desired output which is sum so step 8 is going to be the printing sum and then finally we got the our output so we need to stop the algorithm so we came up with the algorithm now let's convert the same algorithm to flowchart so step 1 here is start so this is like a terminator symbol right so we usually represent using vowel shape so once we start it we are going to read number n to read input or print output we always use parallelogram right so let's add a parallelogram and here we need to read number n so read n so third step is we are going to declare so declaration or process symbol we always use rectangle so first variable is we are going to declare sum equal to 0 and i equal to 1 so step 4 is condition what is the condition here i less than or equal to n so for condition what is the symbol we use either rhombus or a diamond symbol so let's draw a diamond symbol in which we are going to write the condition the condition here is i less than or equal to n so if i less than or equal to n then we have to proceed the three steps which are 5 6 and 7 so in first let's write if it is true so if it is yes if it is s yes, then first we need to read number this is the input number which we are going to read it so to read number it is like an input again so for input we are going to use the parallelogram read number so which we are represented using num so once we get the number we are going to process using this step sum equal to sum plus num and we are going to increment i so this is the process so we are going to use rectangle so first we are going to update sum as sum equal to sum plus num and we are going to increment i so that is nothing but i equal to i plus 1 right we are going to repeat i less than or equal to n so that means once we incremented i again we need to check whether i less than or equal to n so what is the flow it has to be from here it has to go to again 
step number 4 which is the condition so this is going to continue until i less than or equal to n so now already we reached n number of numbers then what we have to do so that case we are going to fall into the else loop right which is no so if it is no then we already computed the sum of n input numbers so we have to print sum so here we have to just print the sum to print output we have to use again okay, parallelogram here yeah. print sum finally we have to end our algorithm by stopping it so we are going to use again one more mobile which will represent terminator so this is step number one this is step number two and third one is declaration fourth one is condition and as per the condition we are executing either 5 6 7 or 8 so these are 5 6 7 this is 5 and this is 6 and 7 and for no we are going to execute step number 8 and finally we have stopped it i hope you understand now how we have converted the given algorithm into the flowchart so now let's write code implementation for the same using C programming language. Now let's write code for finding sum of n input numbers. So first let's define the header and method as int main return 0. So first we have to read input number n. So how many numbers we are planning to add it. So int n, so first we need to know what is the value of n. So first we have to read number n. So first define number n and we need to read from the user. So next step what we have done, we have declared sum as 0 and counter variable i as 1. So int sum equal to 0 and int i equal to 1. So next we have the step number 4 which is here it is a decision symbol right. So it means that in a loop we are reading the number and that number we are adding to the existing sum and we are incrementing i variable. So these steps we are executing in a loop. So for loop either we use for loop or while loop. So for i equal to 1, i less than or equal to n, i plus plus so means we are incrementing 1 by 1. So what we have to do here, first we have to read the number. So first let us declare the number which is int num and just take this number from the user input. So enter number which number we are going to enter. So suppose n equal to 4, 1 to 4 numbers we are going to enter, right? So once we get the number, what we have done? We just have added to the existing sum. So sum equal to sum plus num. So i less than or equal to n, this decision and the increment part we have covered using for loop. And once it is done means we got what exactly we are trying to achieve. So that is sum. Finally, we got the output which is the sum. So, we just have to print it. So, sum of given numbers is and we are going to terminate the program using return statement. So, this is the code which we have converted from this flowchart to code. Now, let us run the code. So, here it is asking for entering number n. So this n is nothing but how many numbers we want to submit. Okay, so for example, n equal to 4. Then 4 times it is going to prompt for taking the number, input number. So number 1 I am giving as 5, number 2 as 3, number 3 as 7 and finally number 4 as 4. So then once we received 4 numbers, 4 input numbers, then 
we got the sum of given numbers as 19. Now let's take another example by running the code once again. This time I am giving input number as 3 and I am going to give 5, 3 and 7. So obviously sum of given numbers, these three numbers is 15. I hope this video is helpful to you. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned. Happy learning.